Hello everybody, welcome back to our channel. In this episode we're going to be solving a Physics 7c practice problem, surfing with Margaret. The topic is the wave equation. As usual, if you're finding this content helpful, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. It really helps our channel. So this is the problem that we're going to be doing. Again, for these uh, Physics 7c problems, if you want to look at the PDF, if you want to look at the uh, actual quiz in order to print it, if that's easier for you, I'm going to leave a link down below. So let's see. Uh, Margaret observes the motions of two points in a one-dimensional wave and makes the following two plots of motions as a function of time. Point A is at position 2 meters, point B is at position 9 meters. If Margaret also observes that the wave has a wavelength of 8 meters, what equation should Margaret write down to describe this one-dimensional wave? Now I'm going to leave you here a second with a bigger uh, you know, picture of both of the plots in case you want to um, pause the video and write them down. But again, if you want the actual PDF, I'm going to leave a link down below. So as you can see, I did my best to uh, replicate both of the plots. And then basically what we need is to figure out this um, equation. So if we figure out this equation, we're good. Now, both of the equations over here are um, y versus t. So these are time equations. This means that lambda could not be possibly figured out by either looking at this one or this one because uh, lambda is a distance and this is time and this is time, right? So this is why the problem needed to give us our lambda directly. I mean, but that's okay, we'll take it. So this one's figured out. So let's just see what else uh, can we figure out. Let's see. We can very easily uh, figure out the amplitude. Our maximum is here at two. Minimum is minus four. So if we do one, two, three, four, five, six divided by two, that is equal to three meters in this case because y is meters. So that is basically how you would do it. You just basically count upwards, divide by two. Now, our um, equilibrium position, why not? So what we do is we subtract our uh, maximum point minus amplitude. So it would be 2 minus 3, that means negative 1. So that's how, I, I mean, there are a ton of ways, honestly, that you could do this, but that's just the way I do it. I do the actual maximum that I see on the graph minus amplitude, and that's that's what's up. In this case, it's negative, which means that um, negative basically means that you shifted your function down. But again, tons of ways to figure it out. Um, lambda, we already have our lambda, so that's 8 meters. And our t, which is our uh, period, we can very easily use uh, whatever graph we want. Both of them should have the same period. This is the same wave. Let's just use this one because I see that this is very nicely, you know, put here. Exactly at 4 and 8. This is the distance between two maximums, between two peaks. So this means that t is equal to four uh, seconds. Okay, so we have this, we have this, we have this. Uh, so now what we want to figure out is whether this guy is moving left or right. Now for this, what I always use is my, you know, very basic equation that it's usually the first equation that people always use, which is uh, distance is equal to um, velocity divided by time. Wait, no. Uh, 
And that equation is velocity times time, right? Or, you know, maybe you know it as velocity is equal to distance divided by time, but like who? It's the same equation. So let's see. Um, so this distance is x equals 2, and this is x equals 9. So that means that in terms of distance, so like displacement, uh, this is equal to 7 meters. So like the displacement from here to here is equal to 7 meters. And then for velocity, we can actually calculate that real fast because we have these two, right? So velocity is equal to distance divided by time, so lambda divided by uh, t, so is equal to 2, like this. So this is 2 times time, delta t. So that means that delta t is equal to 3.5 seconds. Now, how do we use this? Well, okay, so these two are time graphs. So time graphs are a little bit you know, kind of difficult to imagine, but let's just think about it this way. So this is x equals two, right? So let's just imagine that we have a little shape over here at x is equal to two. And then let's just imagine that we have a different one at x is equal to nine. Now, let's imagine that this chip is at t is equal to 4. So this chip right here is over here. I'm an x equals 2 and this is t is equal 4. So this chip over here, using this information, should be at a maximum, right? Now, there are two possibilities for this maximum so if this maximum if this uh, crest is moving to the right then it's going to take it 3.5 seconds to get here so it would arrive at 7.5 seconds right now the other possibility and i'm going to change colors is that this uh crest came from here so that this crest came from here, which means that uh, this crest was here at 0 0.5 seconds and it traveled left and it arrived here at four, which is this one over here. So basically we're gonna have to figure out whether it traveled right and arrived here or whether it came from here. So 7.5 seconds is over here and as you can see, you know, there is no crest here. Clearly, um, you know, there is nothing even remotely similar to a crest over here. So right doesn't really work. So let that means that it probably came from the left. So was it here at 0 0.5? And the answer is yes. 0 0.5 is a crest. So this crest was over here and it was leaving. So it was moving on this direction from left, uh, from right to left. So it was moving left and it arrived here later at t is equal four. So this way it was moving left and left means um, plus, right? Yes, left is equal to plus over here. So now we have this part of the equation and the only thing that we are missing is uh, finding this little guy, the phase constant. It's always gonna be the last thing that you find or well, I always leave it for last because that's just easier on your soul. So what we're gonna do is the method that I always use, which is just the substitution method. I basically pick one point and I just substitute everything, right? So let's see, let's just substitute, you know, take this point. So this point over here is at t is equal to zero because this is t is equal to zero. X is equal to nine. And Y is equal to one. 
like this. So now I'm going to substitute everything over here. So 1 is equal to amplitude, which is equal to 3, sine 2 pi t divided by t, but time is equal to 0, so this is 0. And then this is plus 2 pi 9 divided by lambda, and lambda is equal to 8. plus this little thingy and then uh, plus no minus one we said minus one so uh, one plus one that is equal to two then you divide by three then this is sine inverse of this and um, and this is going to be plus, so it comes as a minus 2 pi 9 8, and this should be equal to this little guy over here. Okay, so let's put this on a calculator. So this is sine negative 1, 2 over 3 minus uh, 2 times 9, that would be 18 pi divided by 8. Uh, and then in order to see how many pi's this is, we just divide by pi. Okay, so negative, negative 2.0 pi, which is equal to, you know, negative 2 pi. Negative 2 pi is equivalent to zero because, you know, uh, two, every 2 pi, the entire cycle restarts itself. So basically you just end up where you started. So these two are uh, equivalent to each other. All right, so final answer. Let's just put it here. My final answer to this quiz, uh, to this 7c quiz, is x t is equal to plus 3 meters sine 2 pi t divided by uh, 4 plus 2 pi x divided by 8 and then plus 0, but I'm just not going to write that, and uh, minus 1 and then this is all meters. Alright, so final answer to this quiz. You know a little bit harder in terms of difficulty just because uh you know we you definitely whenever you have uh time time graphs they are a little bit harder to visualize so you kind of have to do your own little drawing well that's what i always do so i so i always go like okay so if it goes right then it would be arriving at this time and if it came from there, then it would be, you know, and then that's how you basically figure it out. But once you know that little trick that you can just like put a little drawing on the side, then it's super easy to figure out. So I hope that this was uh, helpful to you guys. If it was, please leave a like on this video. It helps our channel a lot. And I'll see you guys on our next video.